Welcome back to another episode of the Rondell Lane Podcast, episode number eight. Trying to get back with consistency. Took a little break. I'm going to blame it on the holidays. But um, we're back. Today I have another creative here, photographer, videographer, a good friend all the way back to the, to high school, Mr. Quion Deberry. What's Welcome going to on? the show, man. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? Pretty good, man. Finally got you up here, man. It's been like, well, I think I started the pod Maybe like four months ago. Yes, sir. And Finally I'm a got big you fan. On. Yes, sir. A big fan. I love what you're doing. Appreciate it, man. Like I said, we we know each other. I know where you come from, but for the sake of the viewers, tell us a little bit about your experience growing up in the great city of Laurenburg, North Carolina. Yes, the large, massive city of Laurenburg, North Carolina. So, um, like Dale was saying, we're both um, we went to Scotland. We've known each other forever. Um, a lot of great experiences. Um, there's pros and cons of being in a small town. One thing that being in a small town will do is boost your creativity because you have to find things to keep you entertained. And I think that's what makes all of us great creators right now. Um, yeah, born and raised in Laurenburg. I uh, left and went to UNC Charlotte, uh, came back and got a degree at Mass Comm at Pembroke and stayed there where I got married. And I have a, a downtown studio, uh, RQ DeBerry. And it's also become a rental space, DeBerry space. But Mostly, this is what I do. Um, commercial photography, uh, videography. Get more into consulting this year, so that's been pretty interesting um, to just see that transition. And Because basically in the business that we do, we're always helping clients with um, figuring out how to market their stuff at best. And now I'm, what I'm trying to get into is the deployment aspect of it. Like once the video is created, you know, what avenues can we put it in so we can correctly be seen by the right audience, that type of thing. But yeah, so been at this game for, what is it, 10 plus years now? Good luck. What, 15 now? Uh, I think. We're close. Yeah. I think, I, for me, I think I think I officially started like late 2010, um, something like that. Yeah, so, so we, we went the same year, like I think yeah. I was nine or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, so time's going by fast, right? Yeah, man, it's been a, it's been an, it's been a grind, man. Yeah. Um, it's January, so, you know, 2023. Like, do you have any goals for this year, professionally or just uh, life goals? You know, I'm finding as I get as I got older, um, Forty Club is life is about peace, happy, prosperity. So uh, I'm really chasing peace this year. Uh, that's one thing uh, within my career, within my personal life. Some of the moves I'm trying to make strategically is about just establishing more peace, uh, more calm. You know, we have a history. We've done the wedding photography, then went over into a commercial. And um, it's like every year you just want to work smarter, not harder. Not saying we're lazy. You just want to, you know, you want to work where you should be at your career. So that's my whole goal this year is to just try to transition to a point where I can do what I would like to do, be able to say no more, and um, just be happy with the process. That, that kind of segues way into my next question. Um, how would you say your work work life balance is in your business? Do you spend? Do you feel like you spend too much time on the grind? Um, let's it's I don't know. It's a mixed pot. I really would say that because the the grind can be in your mind. You can think that you're not doing enough, and then it seems like the universe or God it'll, it'll just he'll just throw things in your lap sometimes. And I think that um, as I as I reflected upon my uh, earlier years, I felt like some things that might have came across my desk that I wasn't prepared for or that I didn't know what I was looking at and I didn't know how to capitalize off of that. So um, I feel like the, I don't know, um, projects, jobs, like the grind, everything is there. Like there's commerce all around us. Money's everywhere. I just think we all have, always have to go get it. Sometimes uh, when you're trying to walk into other, go into other rooms that's the um, part that gets a little bit, you know, strenuous where you're trying to figure out who are the players, who are the shakers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we're both working on, like trying to figure out, like, not only what rooms to get in, but how to talk when you're in those rooms. Um, there's an analogy we always talk about with that bottle of water. Like, you know, you see it um, at a at Walmart or whatever. It's just in the case, and it's worth, like, 50 cents out of the rest of them. And then mm -hmm. that same bottle in a movie theater might be, like, $3, and on the plane, $10. Or, you know, five, whatever. Right, right So right. Um, the biggest thing is, like, we have the skills. We've been had the skills. 
we know that we're capable of doing things better than, I mean, better or just as well as any other high level uh, videography or videography company. So now we're just trying to figure out how to get in those rooms. So yeah, the grind right now, um, my grind really is just trying to figure out how to get in those rooms. The workload is straight. I just want to get into a better situation. I know you saw the AI portraits that, that were popping. Yes, maybe like a month ago. Um, does that does that scare you for any future, like a person uh, aspiring to be like a photographer? Uh, what do you, what do you say? I I do, but I'm gonna say this right here. Um, AI's been here with the iPhones and the. Uh, Google Pixels like for a long time beforehand. I mean, the creative aspect, yeah, that can really hurt some digital, um, some Photoshop gurus who, you know, prize themselves on doing that right there. But we would talk about this right here, how, because, you, you know, you were, were a man who knew about the iPhones and we were just talking about every year it was getting better and better and better. And literally now, you know, we scroll through Facebook or IG and you're seeing family portraits shot on the iPhone. And with that, with AI, um, it scares me, but um, it's also an opportunity and, uh, because, for one, it's, it's kind of funny that people buy that app and that app is actually free. Like, that app is just a gateway to, like, an open source AI that's already online. It's been online for three years. It's just a lot of people don't want to go to the website and sign up for it. So what that app did was make a bridge way where... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's crazy to see that people paying $10 for 20 photos and, they, and the app is literally getting it for free. Um, but it actually, but I'm gonna tell you the funny thing about that. In the in the a consulting field that I'm in, um, that is a new that's a new baby for me right now. So uh, sometimes um, the jargon, I'm kind of like slacking on some of the wordplay. I haven't been in marketing class since I was in uh, UNCP, like you know, over 15 years now. So I've been using open source AI as well to help me write my scripts and write my uh, proposals to clients. I just got finished doing a. Um, uh, God, I'm thinking of the term. Anyway, anyway, long story short, I was doing a. Um, and I just tapped this thing. Okay, I just did a proposal to a client, and I was like, man, like I'm stuck on words, and I typed a few keywords in it, and it gave me a full contract. So it's like, yeah, so it's like things are changing. Um, I think that. Okay, in another way to look at this too, I'm gonna segue into like why I don't think it's a really big issue. Right now, it seems so easily accessible but think of the internet like web 2 when it first came online data was everywhere right and it was free and then the paywall happened right your news was free your stocks were free like anything you wanted to know was free and then what happened apple popped up and time and all those uh the new yorker and, and then you start getting to a story and you get a paragraph and there's a paywall you got to pay yeah, for it yeah i was like what, what's going on yeah, yeah yeah so i think that right now we're seeing the rush because they want to create like an audience that who wants to seek to use this stuff mm -hmm. but it's going to get more expensive i mean it's creative art and Right now, okay, you're first in. It's kind of like the crypto conversation we had. Like, you know, first folks in, you made a killing. It's easy. Yep. And all of a sudden, everything gets inflated. And now you're, you know, you're now it's a balance of, all right, now we can step back in and do our thing, you know? You mentioned uh, UNCP. Um, very interesting. I dropped out of school, um, went to UNC Greensboro. I started working, just never went, went back to it. I, I enrolled in like one more semester, and then as my career went up, with the company I was in, I was just like, uh, um, today, would you tell a young person to go to school? Ooh. USCP, I'm sorry. No. Um, so we have the same arc in a way. It's just I went back to school. Um, and that was, real, that was really more pressure than like actually needing to do it because, remember, we were doing music and um, start low, we're doing low-budget videos with um, – the Panasonic little, you know, mm -hmm. and then we got the Canon GL2s. But, um, you know, I, my first school was UNC Charlotte. Went there because it was what I expected to do, right? Mm -hmm. We got there. Uh, well, I got there, and, you know, I'm pedaling around. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I remember um, the guy's counselor. I was just a number, and soon I got out of there. And then uh, worked for a little while, and that's when we were all vibing. Everybody was creating music, and we—, we we knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know what the, what it was defined as. Right. Because, um, ironically, the places that we were at, I know Greensboro had a mass comm program and cinematography, but UNC um, Charlotte didn't. But, once again, we all knew that we had a creative vibe. We just didn't, had, didn't know how to define it yet or make it into a business. Mm -hmm. 
But I remember going to UNC Pembroke and um, great school, great school. A lot of connects. I still use them today. Do I do a contract right now with a guy who was actually in my mass comm? So that's how that's how important. Um, and that is one thing I will say about college. Sometimes it's a great avenue to build relationships um, with folks and. You know, they all, you're all spread out, and sometimes you'll reconnect later on down the line. So I will say that is one great attribute of college. And that can be done on any platform or anywhere, but, like, college, that's good. But to answer the question, um, if you're not going to be a doctor or a lawyer, and if you're just going to be a creator, just like I tell my kids nowadays, like, hey, you want to be on TikTok, you want to be making little video shorts, shorts like, go ahead and figure out, like, here's, here's the computer, figure out how to run these apps or whatever, because right. this is the business. Like, it's, it ain't, it's like we've seen kids like, I mean, Mr. Beast, he was at uh, ECU, and I mean, this guy now, 100 million plus subscribers, and I mean, he was just making fun videos, riding around in Lego cars in the streets and whatever, like, Absolutely. And so it's like, um, College really isn't needed depend if you're going to be a creator. I think that, um, and to any parents out there, if your child naturally has that that willingness to create something, I think that you should be spending more money into the um, software and the hardware they may need to get them going. And maybe if I would say a good compromise could be if you want them to go to college, um, maybe take like Chris Evers' route. I think he went to he went to a two year. Yeah, and was out. So. Yeah, and got all the technical experience you need because that's what we need is technical experience. We don't really care for the the core classes and Man, crap. Who, who made the camera? Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> I don't need to take a Spanish class. It was it was crazy. So I think that a, a good compromise if, if if a parent's watching this is that if you want your kid to like still go to college, a technical school where they can probably pick up another life skill that's going to be useful, or they can go ahead and go into some type of creative space. That can be a good compromise, but even beforehand, like if your kid is showing that they want to do something now in their middle school, el- hell, even elementary school, hey, push them because you could be ne- looking at the next. Um, I'm trying to think of the little brother that uh, got the. Um, he had he had a, the Ryan's World. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. I mean, this, yeah, you could get a deal in Walmart, twelve years old, got one year made forty million. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, so, that's insane. Yeah, and, that, and that's. I tell people all the time now, my my mindset has changed because uh, the nature of work that I do in my business, Mm -hmm. I'm around like creators all the time. And what do we tell our kids to go to school for? Get a job. Right. So basically that's your way of saying you want your kid to be successful. If I can tell you that there's people doing way greater than getting a good job but making Twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a month making content. Why are we waiting until eighteen to get them in school for another four years to get that good job when they can start making content when they're in high school? The rat race, middle school, the American rat race dream. That's all it is. I think people are waking up now. Yeah, um, not in the majority yet, but it's a good people. I think uh, the pandemic did that. Just Definitely, kinda, people started getting more uh, creative, more entrepreneurial. During that whole period. And and speaking of the pandemic, man, how did you handle that mentally uh, thinking about business when it first, not not after it was here for a while and everybody started spinning, but I mean, those initial days when Disney World shut down, the movie theaters, what did you think was going to happen career-wise for you? I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, I might be a rare case because I was already um, engaged in the healthcare field. This one particular healthcare organization, I um, was trying to get a contract, and they kept denying it, you know, so, boom, pandemic hits. I mean, I, that, that, the thing I did have is that uncertainty that, that first month, I was like, oh, my God, like, what am I going to do, you know, because you're watching your funds dry up, everything yeah. froze, weddings closed, everything's crazy. What's the federal organization? The uh, CDC? Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, CDC. They uh, started... They didn't put all this content out, and they wanted it to trickle down through all the individual healthcare facilities. So, I mean, there was just so much money that was released, um, the COVID fund. I mean, it was a free-for-all. Like, basically, they needed videos every single day because they had to keep everybody updated on any type of new findings they had. And good Lord, when COVID hit our community, I mean, that was like, I remember doing like three videos in one day. That's crazy. Yeah, like it was like it, we, we would sit up in a, in a lobby, be ma- all masked up, and the um one of the top healthcare above line administrators would come in and 
she'll give her a spill and I'll be in the back editing and all of a sudden they call me up like, hey, we found some new information, a new, a new case happened right here or this is this, this. And I mean, we were just running them. So for me, it helped out because um, I didn't have a contract, so everything was a la carte. So by the time that six months had passed, we were hitting them over the head so bad that like they just were forced to give me a contract. And ironically, that was able to allow me to you know keep grinding throughout the whole time. Look at God. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know what right. you're saying right there. Right? Look at God, right? <laughs> That's what's up, man. You had a pretty interesting upbringing. Um, you worked for your father, so like, is that where you think you got? Is that is that where you think you got your entrepreneurial spark from? Absolutely. Okay. Um, funny funny thing is, like, I'm a product of both my parents. My mom was a photographer back in the '80s. I she, remember you telling me. That. Yeah, she had a whole studio, light room, and all that type of stuff. So. Um, it was funny because I was pedal through her, her. She had this large cabinet with all these Minolta's and all these other cameras and lenses, um, which is crazy because you can use them now with Sony's. Right. But um, she had all this this stuff. And um, another thing is I got some of her tripods in my studio right now. Got an aluminum one that I use to this day is kind of like a nod to you know her. I won't sell it or um, get rid of it. But um, so, yeah, she was the uh, photographer. And so I've... But with my dad, I worked with him for 20 years before I went into photography. And, um, yeah, that entrepreneurial spirit came from him because, you know, being up there since I was 12 years old, um, I've seen him go through everything you can go through in business from it's great to, like, the winters when nobody's coming through, you're just sitting out there looking, like, to him cold calling people, um, to him underbidding to get a, get something to, to make ends meet for the family. So to see that sacrifice and also to see the, how he was a people person, um, he knew one, one, good, one thing about entrepreneurship, which we all know, like, you have to really watch how you move and step because you don't want to, like, you know, insult the wrong group or people and things right. of that nature. And, and he was also a public official. So seeing how he was fair to people as well taught me a lot about how to run my business. And that main thing, integrity, was like uh, one of the main factors about him that I also, I mean, one of the main characteristics of him that I also like try to pick up. But yeah, definitely the entrepreneurial spirit, um, knowing that uh, bad times in business are going to happen. Yeah. And just to have a fortitude to keep grinding, like um, that helps me to this day because like there's times that it's a desert, ain't nothing going on. And I don't know why, but I'll start thinking back to when. I was that age, um, and in those winter times, and nothing went on for months. Yeah. And you, you got to scrap and scramble, but you know it's coming sooner or later, and God always provides, you know. Who was a better photographer, you or your mom? You don't got to answer that. You don't got to answer that. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to answer that. I'm going to tell you why. They did it with no um, screen to look at their shot. That's true. That's this, true. Uh, we got a lot of tech helping us out these days. Yeah, you're lying. Like, bro. Autofocus. Yeah. yeah, everything. That like, alone. like Yeah, that takes the whole cake. Yeah, we can't really. Yeah, because it's, it's some shots. Um, She was an in-studio photographer, but she had this album of, like, uh, these shots she did out on location. And, and I mean, she did weddings. I mean, this is back wow. in the day. I mean, you just had that. I think they came in with three rolls of third two film. You got, like, what, um... 70-something yeah. images. Or what's that? No, sorry. 90-something Im images, like, um total. And that was it. And Jeez. you had to get those shots right, right? Because if you, yeah, it was it. And you didn't know what you had either. Yeah, like, yeah. You, just... you, you literally, she. I remember she um, had this, uh, and this, this is so funny because, once again, you don't know what you're looking at when you're little. But I remember she had that little, um, little device that she would hit the flash with, and it would count the f stops. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. light meter. Yeah, 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 yeah light meter. Good yeah. lord. <laughs> but See, yeah, create creators, man. We don't be knowing. We just, nah, nah. We just like know that device to... that does the. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she had a light meter. Uh, um, sorry, light meter and um. It'd be crazy just to watch her go into a spot and set that strobe off somewhere and do all that. I was like, man, you know. I've and never, and, and then to have a corded strobe and have your camera sitting out there, like, I mean, that was that was major. Weddings. Good segue. Oof. So you no longer shoot weddings, right? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> and this guy was a... Uh, <laughs> This guy was like a wedding photographer. Like I was the fairy at the wedding. It's like that running around, like <laughs> poor just, sweat, looking crazy. Yeah, like what was that transition like, man? Um, man, for one, it was a much needed transition. Um, it was interesting, and, I, and I'm, I'm gonna say this right here on camera for the record. This guy um, kept telling me, like, "Yo, you're killing yourself, like going commercial," because he went commercial first. And um, I'm like, nah, man, these weddings, you know what I'm saying? I'm booking, I mean, one year, I, I booked crazy. It was like 40 weddings in a year. I thought I was doing Jeez. something. Tell you guys a little secret about weddings. 
it's the reward is you're gonna be sick in the year. You're gonna be probably hospitalized from doing too much because um, I had a heart condition. But anyway, um, yeah, like transitioning from from one, I knew I needed to get out of weddings. I remember that last year, and we had a lot of many personal conversations, and he knew my heart. But good God, um, I mean that last year, last few weddings, I was just there. And by this time, I was um, I had hired some staff in to help me shoot. And um, I, I just remember moments where I would just go step away from everything and go somewhere and zone out for like 10 minutes and be like, I don't want to be here. And uh, then I'd come back out where the smile started shooting more. And I, it was still great, but it was like that passion was gone. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and, um, and I don't know if that was me. Well, I know it was me, but weddings changed. Yeah, yeah. Because in the beginning it wasn't like that. Yeah, it used to be fun. Like you have interpersonal relationship with the bride and groom and the family, but then it was like I don't know if it would say yes to the dress or bridezilla, but people just turned crazy. And it's like, um, and then when we first started, we were like, I'm not saying you're the only ones around, but like um, there was quality over quantity. And then now um, I hate it for wedding photographers because majority of you are competing with a bunch of people who just bought a camera and. Which I'm not knocking their hustle because, I mean, like I said, these cameras are automated. A lot of stuff you can do, you know, just by clicking a button. But, like, the game has just changed so much. So people, um, they want access to you all the time. They want to not really respect your craft. They want the fastest turnaround. And this is the part, too, that um, I really wish that the wedding industry as a whole would start um, looking at perpetuity. A lot of photographers... When, you, when you're doing lifestyle photography, you don't think about perpetuity. And that's something like, um, you look back now, you'd be like, and, I, and it's, it's weird to say this about weddings, but, you know, when we do commercial work, that's in your contract. Like, sometimes they might come back and buy it from you again after two or three years. Right. And, I mean, good. how many times you have somebody come back to you asking about a, a wedding album and they want to snap on you and you're asking for 100 bucks for the courtesy? Right. So it's like, um, I think that knowing when you know your value of, like, what you're creating – you start feeling like that field needs to be revamped. Uh, why is the cake guy getting two grand or three grand and you're getting, um, you know, half of that when you started? Or why is the venue that you're just going to use once going to get 20 grand and or the, or the, the food person is going to get 20, 30 grand and you're getting, you know, one tenth of that. And right. you're creating something that's going to last for generations. I like I- with me, you know, I, I never was the wedding guy. It was just a bag for me. Yeah. Um, He's from, the wedding like. <laughs> from day one, my mindset was like commercial. Yeah, but, yeah, um, and yeah. you're right, man. You um, you always had a commercial eye. Like, I mean, yeah. it was like, it was just different. Like, you tell. Yeah. Um, would you shoot another wedding, though? Hell no. Like, if it no, came no, down to it? Nope. 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 Never going to shoot one. God willing. I'm never going to say ne- You know what? I never said never. If, if uh commercial guy real slow, I would step in, but... uh. I'll be smiling, but Lord knows I won't want to be there. Just be crying in this. Yeah, really. Just looking like get out. <laughs> so, um, social media, man. Like we've kind of talked about this in in the past, but I want to bring this up on on the pod because uh, I think I think there's a lot of people that feel like you. Let me kind of fill y'all in. Um, I do content. A lot of the people I work with professionally, we're all in that realm of making content. And I tell this guy to make content, but he's not with it. So, what's uh, what's one of the issues, man? Like, what's your biggest thing with that? Call me out, now, <laughs> Um, Honestly, it's not it's not making the content. It's just like this podcast. Like, my nerves are shot because I hate being in front of a camera. I'm really low key behind the scenes. Um, so, I'm I'm still trying to figure out how to. Um, create without being on camera thought about doing um explanation videos and things of that nature i just haven't figured it out where i stand and then it's, it's just getting started um so i don't know it's it's just like this year i haven't posted nothing since um i want to say around my birthday of last year like in the de- top of december i just uh, i go through phases where I don't know. It's, it's energy. If I if I go online and keep seeing too much negative stuff or seeing too many people posting about things, I just want to get like ghosts. Right? I don't want nobody to know what I'm doing. So I just um, I kind of fear the whole creation process, like as far as trying to make content, because I feel like psychologically, I probably want to stop like midway through. And the other thing too, 
that I haven't gotten to, just being completely honest, is I don't know how to be received. And uh, I remember, like, quick little story. I remember when I was commenting all the time or, like, putting posts up and everything. And I remember in my comment feed, it got a little controversial. And that bothered me for, like, a month. Where, where were you comment? Like, what platform? I, I think this was Facebook. And I think it was about something around George Floyd era. Like, um, and well, of course, though. That's controversial. I know, I know, I know. But, like, that was... I don't even know how long ago that was. What was that? Three years. Three uh, years. Three, it'll be three, like two and a half right now. It's it's amazing how your mind has changed like over time. But um, cause like now I could speak about it and really not give a you know, but um it was it was just like um I don't know, I, I just didn't want to be like in the center of a conversation or having to go back and forth with people. And I see that all the time, and I know some people you have to be built for that, or some people you have to know it. Me is more of an irritation. Um, so sometimes I take, I, I move better when like I'm behind the scenes and nobody knows I'm affiliated with something. Um, and this even goes in my career. I had uh, MQSC Digital. And then I said, all right, after 10 years, I, it's, I've earned the right to, re, to, to rename it to RQD Berry. But already, because of the success and then I was starting to go into places that um, might be of a better level. I, I'm starting to get conscious, and now I'm like, all right, form this other company and shift it over there because I don't really want my name or want too much affiliation. I kind of really pride myself on being more private um, nowadays. And I don't know, it could change. I mean, every year I'm getting more, this is weird to say at 40, but I'm getting more comfortable in my online skin, so we'll see. But uh it's just about being private right now, but I, I'm not gonna. I ain't gonna cap like the uh, the money that you can make doing like this brother saying some of his clients are doing. It's like yeah, it's it's very enticing, and you almost want to forget about the other part, you know. Yeah, definitely. I was like that in the beginning. Uh, I used to worry about um, the small things, man, like how I look on camera and how I sound and oh god, sound all man. that stuff. This was like 2016. Um, and I started putting out content slowly, you know, videos on YouTube. And after a couple of videos, man, it, all that stuff kind of goes away. Like, it, it never completely goes away, but the impact, it, it's not really lasting anymore. Yeah. And then when you see so many other people that you think are, like, stars on camera, and then you, you meet them in real life, and they're saying the same thing. Like, you know, I hate doing this. But. <laughs> so it's like, oh, this is normal. Because it's not normal to talk to a camera like it's a person. That's the thing, like potting. Like when I see somebody like potting, they don't look crazy. Oh, sorry, they don't look crazy to me when they're doing it. Um, amateurs, man. It's amateurs, I know, I know, studio, man. man. See, this this what happened. Like this is why I can't do it because I'll be dropping. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be that guy hitting the the over the, the, the boom mic. Like, boom. <laughs> I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have an outtake video one day, but um, but yeah, um. Yeah, it's like cats I see vlogging. Like when I see them walk around talking, they don't look crazy to me, but I just feel like if I do it, I'm gonna feel crazy. So yeah. I just you get used to it though. I yeah. mean, dude, I've at this point I've been vlogging in airports, man. Like it's where how many people are in the airport, dude? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm just walking around, eh, like yeah, it is what it is. And you nobody, feel crazy? It, yeah, nobody cares. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, like, and, and see, and that's what I tell. That's another thing I tell people. Like today. It's way easier than I was when I when I started doing it five six years ago. Like people still were learning what vlogging was. They wasn't used to seeing somebody with a camera and a big mic on it. Now it's yeah, it's nothing. Just like uh, remember in the beginning when I first got strobes doing photography. Yeah, I used to stop traffic downtown. Like two two uh, Paul C. Buff lights going off in oh, the yeah. corner. People weren't used to seeing that. When they saw photography, it was just a camera. Mm -hmm. Now, everywhere, yeah, you don't get no like nobody pays you any attention. Like mm -hmm. we literally used to stop traffic, bro. Like people would stop their car and they'd be like looking over. Like God. they remember, probably thought it was some type of production because they just wasn't used to seeing all that equipment. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you remember? You remember the way these guys used to be? Hey man, what time? Yeah, like, what do you, what do you got, man? How, how's all this firing at the same time? It's like, triggers, man. Strokes. Yeah, that's the that's the funniest thing, man. Uh, 
going back to weddings, man, it's just when you when you meet the photographer that's just starting out. Oh god, yeah. they want to have a conversation. You like you're trying to shoot, like yeah. they're just on, over your shoulder, man. Ask you questions. You're like, bro, like, that's a, that's a great camera you got there, man. Yeah. Now, what about the photographer that got like the little EOS, um, the, the Digi, yeah, <laughs> this is Digix too, yeah, <laughs> with, the, with the kit lens, yeah. and want to start comparing this stuff to you, like, yeah, man, yeah. I got this shot over here a minute ago, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm like, bro, leave me alone, man. What is your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh man so um like when you're not doing photography man like what's your well i shouldn't say photography but when you're not doing business um like what do you do for fun Pip it up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, and it, no, don't, nah. don't 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 give me the spend time with my kids. Nah, uh, I'm I'm gonna be honest, fun, with, man. Like, what do you do for man, fun? For fun, I'm gonna be honest with you. My um, I'm in like once again, I'm in Lauenburg, so love Lauenburg because it's smaller and I'm you know, I can get in my office in um five minutes. I swear I'm amateur in this thing yeah, for real. But um, it happens, man. I know I'm gonna get this hand game over here somewhere. But uh, yeah, like basically. I just do the gym like all day. Like I mean, that's that's all I like to do. Um, I get up at four thirty, do the gym till six thirty. Um, kids go to school, office, and then at nighttime when I'm really stressed out, I go out to my barn, hit the um, bag, do a little mess around there, and that's it. I mean, I have nothing else. Like sometimes I might hike, um, but I just really enjoy the gym. It's, it just gives me peace. That's my only balance. Cool. You still uh, messing around with music at all? This guy used to be a producer. I might make four songs a year. And, uh, and of course, I never release just personal stuff, uh, things I might be thinking. It's, and that's another avenue. If I'm really stressed about something, he'll hear it. But uh, <laughs> but I got, uh, he's probably the only person that hears it besides my brother. But, um, yeah, I'll create a song or two. Ironically, my brother's got back into production. Um, so he's been sending me tracks, and we've been coming up with concepts but it's more for the sake of we're trying to figure, um, just kind of ghost write and um, maybe sell it to another, you know, musician, since that's what everybody's doing. See, that's that's where the content comes at, bro. <laughs> you have a platform, you have people hitting you up, like, yo, send me a beat for my YouTube video or for an album. It's just it's so many platforms, man, because now we got stuff like TikTok and yeah. Instagram. You can upload, you know, Lynch, the yeah. um, motivational speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he got... Some of his affirmation videos, like he'll take his affirmations, put them on a beat. Now he got an album. He put them on uh, TikTok, put them on Instagram. People wow. use them as songs. The same way, you know, you post a reel, post your story, and you use like a Jay Z or something. Yeah, man. Dang. But you got a it's content game, bro. Yeah, man. So many platforms, man. So many ways to make money off of uh, like hobbies, man. Damn. I'm not no. looking to that one because I, dang, I have, it's a few motivational ones I just did recently. I don't know. That's kind of got me thinking now for real. Have you seen the Ant Man trailer yet? Yes. What did you think about that? Very interesting. I'm trying to see how they're gonna spin this cane. I think I think Ant Man's gonna die in this one, um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just interested to see how you're gonna defeat um, Kane. That doesn't make any sense. So, are they? So, do you have any excitement for this movie? Nah, I'm. A, I'm a, I mean, I am a fan of seeing a man like play Kane the Conqueror. Is that his name right? Uh, yeah, Kane the Conqueror. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I'm interested in seeing that spin because I thought he did a great job during the Loki series, um, and it does look different from the other stuff that Marvel been putting out. Because man, like, I mean, damn, Black Panther just had like that was a major. I mean, actually, I knew it was gonna be horrible, but like, yeah, it's just. Um, it's, it was solidified. It was horrible. Yeah. It, uh, but this looks a lot of CGI, you know. But uh, it looks like it could be interesting. Um, I'll be honest; I haven't followed the full um, synopsis of it. I haven't done any further research besides looking at the uh, trailer. But I am interested to seeing how Ant Man right is going to spar up against this guy, who's supposed right. to be one of the most powerful. Folks in the universe, so I don't know. What's your take on that, man? I'm curious. Um, well, you know me. I've kind of a lifelong uh, Marvel fan. Yes, sir. And the last, they've almost completely <laughs> turned me around 180 yeah. um, in a year. Yeah. We're talking a lifelong fan. 
Yeah. And school meal last stuff. Yeah. yeah, a year within a year they've I'm about done. Haven't seen Black Panther still. Man, um, you ain't missing nothing, bro. Every movie, every Marvel movie from twenty, well, two thousand and eight when it started, on forward, almost everyone I was there on opening night. Not like Friday, but like Thursday night, opening yeah. night. And to I haven't even seen Black Panther. Um, I saw the trailer for Ant Man. Um, it's like you. The only the only interest I have. Is just seeing what Jonathan Majors is going to do because he's, he's, yeah. he's a great actor. Yes. Outside of that, bro, like Thor, Thor left me. Thor oh. left me really. Like, oh my god, yeah. Thor was like a, a gut punch, and then although I haven't seen Black Panther, just what I've heard and and the commentary I've heard about it, that took me out. Because Black- after Thor, I said if Black Panther don't do it, I'm done with the MCU. Bro, Black Panther will make you mad. Um, as a man and as a black man, and I ain't gonna get too deep on it, but like I just, uh, I was turned off the way they went with it. Yeah. And this is my one gripe I'm gonna say, and I know online everybody has their own little take about it. Oh, you know, we got respect. Um, Chadwick, dude, Superman would have died, recast him. Batman dies, recast him. They, they've done that, bro. They, many times, yes. You take the only African American superhero. It's positive. The first one made you a Billy, and it was organic grassroots how it got you a Billy. You didn't even have to market right. crazy. Like, you, you look at the bottom line of any other Marvel movie, they got to go get, like, all these type of sponsorships, all this little chain game. They got to spend, like, good half a billion to even get it, like, going. Black Panther was that straight, like, heat. It was there. Yep. I remember churches were buying tickets and droves and sending people to the movie theater. Like, I mean, I remember a lawyer in our own town hosted, brought the whole theater out. Wow. Like, brought, yeah, brought like for like three nights. Wow. It had like this boys and girls club, like just all the kids there. I, and then hired me to take pictures of it. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's how serious it was. Yeah. It was a cultural moment for us. That was a movement. Though. Yeah. And it's like, you you know the importance. You've done the data. It's not like it's a hidden thing. I mean, we're in, for God's sakes, the studio's in Atlanta. Right. And you go back and do this. Yep. And, you, and fans are petitioning. They did many uh, studies. It was high numbers. Recast. Respect to Chadwick, but recast. Yep. He did his, he, he left a legacy, but the character was more important. And then the story arc, when we find out what it was going to be, that's, that, that gut punches you even worse because it's like... <laughs> I told you uh, Ryan Coogler, which is the director. Yeah. I told you he didn't have nothing to do with that, bro. Yeah. Like, they forced him to make that script. Yeah. Because he, he came out and said, well, Yep. Yeah. You seen that? I saw yeah. it. Yeah. So that, that's a gut punch when you um, when you see the, how he, what he what it was supposed to be and how he felt about it. I was like, man. It's an agenda, bro. It is an agenda. It's an agenda at this point. You, you, can't, you can't deny it. I'm thinking I'm over all of that, man. Like, yeah. I finally reached a point where they've killed the... Uh, Yep, it all ended with in game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that after that phase was over, like, all right, man, we good. Like, yeah, I don't even really watch too much TV. No, honestly, man, it's, mm-hmm. it's, at this point, it's just uh, YouTube and um, video yeah. games here and there. Yeah, yeah, informational purposes only. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, any last things? Anything to plug, man? Before we get out of here, uh, let me see. Well. If you need headshots, if you need content, contact him. <laughs> no, uh, if you if you're in um, Laurenburg, um, Fayetteville, I mean, you know, I'm all over. I travel anywhere, but like, uh, you know, if you need headshots, uh, some branding, we all work together. You know what I'm saying? So this is a, this is a good look from a man like hooking me up. Uh, let me come on his podcast. But yeah, if you need headshots or um, any type of commercial media done. Need help with consulting. Um, we, like I said, we all work together. We scale up productions, so you know you can reach out to me or you can reach out to him. You know, but you know it's all a movement. We're all just trying to grow and you know always assist each other and be better. So that's that's all the plug is. Yep. You got any um any trips coming up and any vacations planned? Uh, right now probably not. Uh, I mean, really, uh, what I'm trying to do this year. Uh, with my the other business is travel more. I didn't travel as much last year, um, so I'm just making a conscious effort to stay on the road. Um, 
just like here, but like I know I got Columbia, Atlanta. Um, trying to get back in the Cali market. I don't know because they get kind of crazy over there. But um, we need to go to Atlanta, bro. I know. Yeah, we we gonna do that. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, man. Appreciate you coming on the show. Um, you guys check me out on the next episode coming soon, and uh, like, share, subscribe to this channel, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.